Hello everyone, hello peeps, welcome back to another video on the Minecraft channel. Today we're going to be going through the last question on Edexcel GCSE Maths Paper 3 Higher. It appeared when we first saw it on the paper to be one of the hardest questions Edexcel has ever put in their papers. And, well, I mean in the thumbnail it's going to say hardest question, I want you to click on the video, but today we're going to be showing you it's not actually as bad as it seems. And I'm going to show you how I did it in the exam. I'm sure there's loads of other ways. If you did do a different way, please let me know in the comments below. But let's get straight into this. Shown below is a circle with radius R and two regular hexagons. The sides of the larger hexagon, that's the one on the outside of the circle, are tangents to the circle. And the sides of the smaller hexagon, that's the one in the inside, are chords of the circle. If you just want a refresher of what a chord is, if you've got a circle, right, and you've got a line passing through it like that. This bit here is a chord of the circle. So we know these two facts, that they're tangents and chords. And we need to consider the perimeter. And doing that, we need to prove that 3 is less than pi, which is less than 2 root 3. So let's just look at the question. We can see it says, considering the perimeter. If, it, if I can highlight properly, considering the perimeter. So what that indicates to us is that we need to find the perimeter of the shapes. But we literally only know about the radius of the circle, but we can figure out what the perimeter of the shapes are using some clever positioning. So what I'm going to do, they didn't give you this in the exam, but I'm going to draw a center of the entire shape, all three of them, and I'm going to draw one line from the center to the side of the circle. You can see it touches this side of the circle here. And I'm going to draw another line from the center of the circle to here, which is also on the side of the circle. But we also know that these points where the radius meets the circle is also where the radius of the circle meets the vertex or one of the vertices of the small hexagon. Because obviously, right, we've got a circle if I show you, we've got a circle, right? And then we've got a chord. And a chord has to touch the circle at two points. So, for example, right, we'll come to this in a moment. Tangent only touches at one point. A, a chord, it's also known as a secant, if you want, touches the circle at two points. They intersect at two points. So we know that this point here, and this point here also touch the hexagon. And this means we can make a triangle. So I'm actually just going to draw the hexagon out here, right? Um, now, excuse my drawing skills. I'm very bad at drawing hexagons, but I'll give it a go. This is what I actually did in the exam. Just separating the shapes really helps you visualize. So we've got the center of the hexagon here. And what I've done, I've just drawn a line from there to there and from there to there like that. Now, what do we know about this length? Well, we know it's going to be r because it's also the radius of the circle, isn't it? It says, shown below is a circle with radius r, right? That means we can use this for our hexagon as well. But how can we work out anything beyond this? Now, I know there is a hexagon fact that you might want to jump to, but I'm going to show you why that is, okay? So, first of all, if you've got a point and all the lines go into the different vertices from the center of a circle, how do we work out what the angle is? If, well, I mean, that, if, I'll try and make, help that make more sense, right? If I draw in the other lines, like that, right? You can see we split our shape into six equal segments. That means the center point here has to be split into six parts, right? But what is the point around the center add up to? 360 degrees. So we can say that 360 degrees divided by six, because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different sect was how would you what would you call it? Like a segment, sector? I don't know. These different like parts of this hexagon are all equal. And we've just divided the whole thing into six, 360 divided by six, that's going to equal 60 degrees. 
So we were looking at this one in red here. We know that this angle here is going to be 60 degrees, right? But we can know a little bit more than that, can't we? We know that this length here and this length here are the same. And if I just draw this triangle out here, right, we know that this is going to be an isosceles triangle. So, how can we work out the base angles of an isosceles triangle? Well, we know that angles in an isosceles, or any triangle actually, add up to 180. So we can do 180 minus 60. That gives, 100, that gives us sorry, 120. And since we've got two angles here, we do 120 divided by 2, and that gives us 60. So that means then, since each of these angles here are 60, since all the angles are equal, this is an equilateral triangle, isn't it? I'm just equilateral. So if it's an equilateral triangle, that means all the sides have to be the same also. So that means this length here is R here. This length here is also R. But since we know that this triangle segment is also the same as these all of these ones right we can just multiply r by 6 to get the perimeter of the small hexagon so that's like a third of it done so the perimeter of small hexagon equals 6r okay before we move on to the next shapes, I just want to point out something. Now, I feel like a lot of people might have got near the end, but then didn't realize how to link it back to this inequality over here. All we, I think, I don't know about the mark scheme, but what I did and what a lot of people on the internet have done is they've just say, said that they've just put the numbers back into the inequality. They've shown it because it's clear that the small hexagon has a smaller perimeter than the circle, which has a smaller perimeter than the large hexagon. If I'm wrong, please let me know down below. Um, this is just what I think. This is how I think it is done. But anyway, let's look at the large hexagon. Now, I'm going to draw a big hexagon in a moment, but let's look at the radii first. We know that the sides of the large hexagon are tangents to the circle, which means they touch at one point, right? I'm going to do this bit in green so we don't get confused. So we know that the sides of the larger hexagons are, t or larger hexagon rather, a a tangents to the circle. So that means we can draw, if I just rub out this line here, that means we can draw a line going from the center of the circle to that point on the circle circumference right there. And we can also draw one going here. Now I am... I think 99% sure there was another way to do this, is, but this is how I did it. And we also know that th this is a tangent, right? So this is also the point where the hexagon, the side of the hexagon, touches the circle. So we can use that to our advantage, right? So if I draw a, another shoddy-looking hexagon over here, right? So we've got our hexagon, right? And we've got our two lines here, our radii, so we know they're going to be length r, right? But what I would like to point out to you in the hexagon, opposite li or opposite sides, like these two sides here, are parallel, right? This here is going to be parallel to that. That means that the length here, 2r, because r plus r is also going to be same down here. This is also going to be 2r, right? And that means we can create a triangle. Do you see our triangle that we've made here? So we've got a triangle here, right? But we only know one of the sides. So how on earth are we going to work out any other information? So let's go back to looking at properties of polygons. How do we work out the interior angle of a polygon. A regular polygon that is. So we're going to take the number of sides, which is n, and multiply it by 180, but we need to subtract 2 from n. So 180 times n minus 2. And that gives you the total number of 
degrees inside the interior angles of the polygon. So then to get each individual angle in a regular polygon, we need to divide by n. So in this case, we've got a hexagon, so that's six sides. So that's going to be 180 multiplied by 6 minus 2 over 6, which is going to be 180 times 4 over 6, which equals, I'm just going to do a bit of simplification here, that's going to equal 120 degrees. So we know that this angle here is 120 degrees. But what else do we know about this? This is a regular hexagon, right? Which means that these two sides here have to be the same also. That means we've got another isosceles triangle. So let's look at trying to find these two angles. I can't remember if it helps us, but we're just going to do it anyway. So total angles in a triangle sum to 180. So we're going to do 180 minus 120, which is 60 degrees. And then because we've got two base angles, we're going to do 60 divided by 2, which equals 30 degrees. So we know that this is 30 here. This is 30 there. So how can we work out the length of the side? We're going to bring in a bit of bit of more complicated trig here. We're going to be looking at the sine rule. If you need a bit of a reminder what the sine rule is, is basically saying how the sides and its corresponding angles interact with the sine function to create an equivalent ratio between each side of a triangle. If that sounds like complete nonsense to you, it probably is, to be honest. I don't know what I'm saying, but... Basically, we've got sine A, an angle, divided by A, its side, so the side opposite. So, for example, these two sides here correspond the side and the angle. So, if this is A, for example, then this is angle A. It should be the other way around in some of the capitalization. But, and that is going to be equal to sine B over B, which is equal to sine C over C. So, we know that's the sine rule. If you want me to prove it, let me know in the comments down below. Um, and we can say that if we've got 2r divided by sine 120, and that is equal to our side, let's call it x, divided by, so it is an equilateral triangle. So even if we're looking at this side here and this angle here, the other two sides and angles are still going to be the same. So it doesn't really matter at this stage. So we're going to have x divided by sine 30 degrees. Okay, then we're going to divide both sides by sine 30. So, or multiply rather. So sine 30 on both sides. Multiply, not divide. It will divide by 1 over sine 30 actually. But let's not get into that. Because we want to make x the subject. I'm just going to swap these sides here. So we get x equals sine 30 multiplied by... 2r over sine 120. Now sine 30, that's equal to a half. We've got a calculator in this paper, but these are nice numbers, so you should really know your exact trick values for these. Sine 120, I mean, it's a bit of a more challenging one because you've got to think about the graph and whatnot. So we've got 2r. Oh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually write it like a fraction division just to make it extra clear. Sine 120 over here is going to be root 3 over 2. And if we just deal with what's in the brackets first, um, we can just divide, so keep flip change, KFC, finger looking good. I'm just going to speed through this, so we get 4R over root 3. And then we're going to expand out the brackets, so we end up with literally just multiplying fractions, multiply across. We get 4R over 2 root 3. These cancel out. You end up with 1 and a 2. So you end up with x equals 2R over root 3. But we're not done here yet, are we? We need to... Well, I mean, I think it's just good practice to rationalize the denominator. So let's do that. Multiply top and bottom by a root 3. These two root 3 times root 3 give you a 3 on the bottom. 2R times root 3 is just 2R root 3. And that is one of the sides, right? But if you remember, we've got six sides. So we're just going to multiply that bad boy by six right there. And we're going to end up with, that just becomes a one, that becomes a two. These two cancel out like that. And we end up with 2r root 3 times 2. And then if we 
expand this out, we get 4r root 3, like that. So I'm just going to box that, and we're going to write it up at the top, next to our perimeter of the small hexagon. I'm going to do this one in green. So perimeter of large hexagon equals 4r root 3. Cool. Okay, the last bit before we get into the inequality stuff, the perimeter of the circle, or circumference as it's known, do you know why we call it pi? Because pi is the Greek letter for P, and P stands for perimeter. So what is the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r, right? Don't say it's pi r squared. We use pi r squared so much more than 2 pi r at GCSE level. I'm not too sure about A level. I hadn't had a good look at it yet. But... I actually wrote pi r squared in my exam, we don't talk about that. I did correct it after that, but don't make a mistake. We got 2 pi r over here, and let's pop it into an inequality. We've already established about the small hexagon being smaller, the perimeter being smaller than the circle, which has a smaller perimeter than the big hexagon. So if there is an explanation, please let me know. No, sorry, please let me know down in the comments below. But let's just put it into an inequality. So we've got 6r, which is less than 2 pi r, which is less than 4r root 3. And we're done. Or are we? No, we're not. Because that isn't the thing that we're proving. We need to prove a different inequality. Well, it's not different. It's still the same thing. But as you can see, look, we can get rid of the r. It's all common in all of them. So we can say that 6 is less than 2 pi, which is less than 4 root 3. But then we've also got another thing. Look, all of them are factors, or have factors rather, of 2. So we can divide through by 2. And we add up with 3, which is less than pi, which is less than 2 root 3, which is exactly what they are looking for. Drew Square gave me a, an ellipse. That's fine. We've got our inequality, we've proven using the perimeter that 3 is less than pi, which is less than 2 root 3. Um, if you've got any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I'll be sure to re reply to 99.3% of them. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give us a like, comment, share, subscribe, all that bish bash bosh that YouTube people like to say. Stay around for all the random content on this channel more interesting stuff apart from math gcse will be coming up after exam season but until next time i will see you in another previous video next video or whenever until next time goodbye